to how to Yu-Gi-Oh! So let's explain gimmicks versus consistency. So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about gimmicks and consistency and what they are and what they're about. Um, I'll touch upon it a little bit in this section a bit. I'll speak more about it later in the video. But the, one of the gimmicks that, you know, that we find that doesn't work is definitely with Exo Sisters that came out earlier this year in Battle of Chaos in January. Where is the movement of the graveyard that relies on your opponent? And this is something I want to stress out and something that's really important and I want to uh, tell this to anyone who's playing the game. Any gimmick, unless it's a hand trap, that relies on your opponent is garbage. I'll just say that now. It's absolute garbage and will always fail. Unless it's a hand trap, right? Because hand traps are, you know, are cards you can activate that rely on your opponent. Those are fine. But if it is not a hand trap and it is a gimmick of an archetype, that will always fail. Maybe the, the could there be exceptions? Um, Cyframe was the exception, and guess what? They were hand traps. So there is no exceptions to this rule currently at the moment. Maybe Konami will create one out of spite, but in the foreseeable future, really, gimmicks that involve relying on your opponent are trash. You know, unless they're hand traps or board breakers, or that sort of thing. Yeah, if they're not one of the two, one of these two sort of cards, they're absolutely trash. And with that, I'll continue on with the rest of this video. Gimmicks. What is a gimmick? A gimmick is an effect that's on a card that one has a strict activation condition. Two, the effects resolution relies on the opponent. Examples of cards with gimmicks are three tactical talents, dust and roller, gizmek uka. So let me talk about gimmicks. So I've just talked about obviously you know before about gimmicks and now let me just give some examples of why gimmicks in Yu-Gi-Oh just is a not a good idea. I consider it hot garbage. First of all, cards with gimmicks, right? As I said, one, have a strict activation condition, and two, rely on your opponent. These two conditions mean that 90% of the time, things are not going to go well for you. Mediocre at best. The situations you're going to be using them is usually in a situation where you're either you're losing, mostly, or, you know, you're trying to get some form of advantage. But, you know, things are not in the best place. It's usually in a losing sort of scenario. And cards with gimmicks are usually cards that have effects that sound good in theory. However, in practice, it goes all wrong. Consistency. What is consistency? Consistency is effects that are on cards that, one, have simple activation conditions, two, the effects are flexible, allowing multiple ways to use them. Examples of consistency cards. Infinite Impermanence. Breakthrough Skill. Chaos Space. Alrighty then, now we'll talk about consistency. So, I talked earlier just about consistency and laying down some examples to give you a general overview. But what is it about consistency? Well, as I said so earlier, consistency are cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that have simple effect, that have effects that have a simple activation condition. And the second thing is that these cards are flexible. This means that you can use these cards in a myriad of ways. This is a sign, as I like to say, of great, fantastic card design, right? An example of a fantastic, consistent card is a card, is a normal trap called Infinite Impermanence. First of all, Infinite Impermanence is a normal trap, right? You can activate it from your hand by not controlling any cards. Fantastic. Here's a, here's a way of activating this card in a different way by not controlling any cards. Already, it is versatile. And let's um, get to its other effect is that it can negate a monster effect. But furthermore, it, when it negates a monster effect, cards in the column, it negates cards in the column of the of where it is activated. 
So if you negate a uh, monster in the extra deck zone column, then cards in your know, opponent's side of the field on that particular column, they cannot be activated. It's free real estate. Find a fantastic card. You can use this card to get yourself out of a floodgate that is on the board and as well negate a monster effect. You know, these are the sort of cards that you're going to see time and time again in our meta game, in competitively, you're going to see them in all myriads of decks. And another good thing about consistent cards is they're just good cards in general. And you can also put them in your side deck. You can put them in your main deck. You can put them in any kind of deck and you can play them in any way you want because they're flexible. You can play them in any phase. This is another thing that's really good about a uh, consistent card is that the other third thing about them is that you can play them in any phase. Absolutely fantastic cards. Okay, and I think I've covered most of the things you know about gimmicks and about consistency. So you've got a general overview. So I'm just going to go into my conclusion. Now. So remember, when it comes to cards with gimmicks, right? They go nowhere. Cards with gimmicky sort of effects go nowhere. Remember, bad card design is one, right? Strict activation conditions. Any card that has a strict activation condition is not going anywhere. It's not a good card, right? Because it doesn't help you in the current game state that you will be in with whatever effect it has. The second thing, right, is that with cards with gimmicks is that they rely on your opponent, which again is not a good sign. And the third thing, you know, with gimmicks as well, is that they like to, they, they are cards that, that require effort, that require, that are entitled. I like to call them entitled cards because, first of all, you know, they have you ask us they have you ask pointless questions. The first question you'll be asking, which is sort of pointless, is like, okay, so I have to wait for my opponent to activate a monster effect. I have to right hope that my opponent doesn't negate this uh, spell card. I have to hope that I get this card in my first turn. Already you've said you've had three hypothetical questions and you started with I have to. Whenever you get a card and you're asking questions and you initially look at it and it says, and you're asking and you're saying, I have to three, three times or more, that is a bad card. It doesn't matter what effect it has. If those are the line of questioning that you have when you initially see a card, that is not a good card in Yu-Gi-Oh! It really isn't. You know, it's not going to take you anywhere. 90% of the time, it's not going to help you in any sort of situation that it says it's going to help you in. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.